Hello, today we're going to be talking about uh, Japanese quail, also, also known as pharaoh quail. Their scientific name is uh, uh, Coternix japonica. And uh, these are the, an extra large variety I have here. Um, first off, let me uh, get, get the show started by talking about uh, how to sex them. It's very simple. It's very simple how to sex them. Hold on, girl. This here is a male. He has a nice, uh, clean, um, caramel colored chest. I know. And this here is a female. She has a uh, uh, lots of uh, spots on her chest. So, when you're looking to sex males, when you're looking to sex, males have no spots, females have spots. This is true for uh, a lot of the variety, a couple of the varieties. The, uh, uh, the Italians or the, the gold pharaoh quail have the exact same deal where they have the cream chest for males, spotted chest, um, and a couple of the others. Texas A&M's are a lot harder because Texas A&M's are a, uh, a solid white bird with a black spot on the head, and the only way you can uh, um, sex them is by actually watching them and or uh, listening to them. Males have a what they call a crow, which is um, I don't know if any of them will do it uh, during the video, but it's just a, a you'll, you'll see them extend their head out, stretch their neck out, and uh, make this weird, uh, uh, a funny whistle. So that's the only way you can really tell for Texas A&M's is by observing the birds. Now, if you, I'll show on another one of these guys. Pharaoh quail are very ag aggressive breeders and they will also uh, mount to their males. And you can tell because they peck on the, uh, they, they grab the, the bird by on the back of the head and then breed them. And so they are very uh, aggressive of breeders. And uh, so the birds that have no feathers on, uh, missing are the ones that are more dominant in your in your group uh, what I this is my favorite actual breed of quail and there's multiple two re reasons why the main reason is is they outproduce Bob white quail so if you if you're wanting to know uh, so if you want to know if, if should I go code next quail or Bob white quail depending on what you're looking for Pharaoh quail might be uh, a, a better a better bet. Here's why. If, if I take a uh, a pharaoh quail egg and a bobwhite quail egg, put them both in the incubator. Pharaoh quail eggs take 16 days to hatch. Bobwhite quail eggs take 21 days to hatch. All right. So that doesn't sound too bad. You know, it's an extra five days for bobwhite. But the thing is, is once they have hatched, pharaoh quail eggs, or pharaoh quail, will uh, start laying eggs at six to eight weeks old. So that's a month and a half to two months old. Whereas bob whites take six months. So if you do the math, a pharaoh quail will have grandchildren by the time the bob white lays its very first egg so they, they definitely mass produce um pharaoh quail lay eggs like just like no other they do like i think they say around 30 eggs a year i mean sorry 300 eggs a year which is pretty good uh in the summertime 
if you have if you have really good feed I've seen them like two eggs in a day so uh, you know they're, they're really good production now on the on the bad side on the bad side I'm not, the cons for this breed as I see it are uh, the females are such geared for mass production mass production of eggs that um, they burn out very quickly and I mean like they they'll die at anywhere from six months to a year old because they're they're just pushing pushing these eggs and uh, the way to prolong their life is to give them calcium because what they're doing is they're putting all their energy um, into producing these eggs and they actually leach calcium from their bones so you have to keep a steady supply of uh, calcium to them or else they'll die like around six seven months old males on the other hand I've had them live around four to five years old and because uh, they don't you know have as much work to do now you can pen them up uh, this is just for for video purposes but they can be in very close proximity I used to have a uh, uh, what they call a quail battery it's a there's a company called GQF or Georgia Quail Farm they have a website um, where I had a, a tiered cages and each individual cell is uh, 10 inches by 20 inches and you would I, I would have a, a trio uh, normally you can do anywhere from a, a pair to a, a quad in each pen but uh, now meat wise they they are a little bit they're a bit smaller than bobwhite quail but I think it's offset by the fact that they uh, can just mass produce uh, way faster than your Bob Whites can. So the way I look at it is, if you're wanting to get, oh, I highly recommend for the person that's getting into agriculture, getting into raising poultry of any kind, um, go for quail. Don't worry about chickens, don't worry about anything else. Go for quail, go especially for pharaoh quail. Um, they're, they're, like I said, they just mass produce. They're gonna give you a lot of uh, enjoyment. They're, uh, and, and the thing is they don't need a lot of space, they don't need a lot of money. You can buy them very cheaply. You, I've gone to auctions and bought full grown adult quail for 80 cents or a dollar. Um, you could buy chicks for you know a quarter or fifty cents. On Craigslist, they're a little bit more expensive, around the the dollar to two dollar range per adult. But you know you're, you're not expending a lot of money. Um, you can have like a rabbit hutch or a bird cage or something to start off with a couple pair if you want. Um, you can get away with a little styrofoam inc uh, incubator, and, and a styrofoam incubator will hold 120 eggs, and uh, so the costs are very, very low. They don't eat a whole lot. So if you were to buy a 50 pound bag of feed, it would last you a long, long time. Uh, what I recommend for feed is either a uh, chick starter or game bird crumbles and for their entire life, uh, even as adults. Here's a... Uh, I don't know if you can see that at all. It's very fine, easy for them to digest. And um, chick starter is like around 17, 18% protein. Uh, Gamber crumble is around 22%. You could, uh, I suppose if you wanted to, you could mix it if you want. But chick starter is, is more than enough. Um, I also, post in some uh, photos of their eggs they have a, a brown egg with like chocolate spots on it and so that's it's a little bit interesting <clears throat> it's, so it's not when you see that it's not poop on the egg it's just the way they're uh, they're, they're just speckled eggs um, yeah barrow quail are a lot they've been domesticated for a long period of time and so they're a lot easier to handle than bobwhites 
Like if, if I had Bob Whites in this cage, they would go crazy bouncing off the walls, uh, break their neck off the ceiling, because uh, I've, I've seen that happen. They're just very, uh, I mean, they're wild. Whereas feral quail here, they're fairly calm, they're looking around, whatever, trying to settle in, and um, it, they're just easy to catch. You know, as, I, as you saw earlier, I can just reach my hand in there and just grab one. Like that, look at that. Yeah, they fight a little bit, but this female here. But other than that, if, you, if I was to drop one, I can uh, easily catch it right back up with the hands. Um, whereas if you're if a bob white was to get out, they'd choo, take off, you know, a hundred a hundred uh, yards or so. Uh, feral quail, they will uh, fly. What's cool about feral quail, if if you see them fly, is it's like a helicopter. They'll actually uh, come up off the ground, straight up or at a slight angle, and then take off. So they don't need a running start. They don't need anything like that. They just come up off the ground and then go forward, um, which is really neat. But if they're a caged bird and one gets out while you're taking care of them, they don't travel far. Um, when I got started with feral quail, I actually had a, I handmade some cages with dividers and I did it on a, uh, I had them in my house, uh, in a spare bedroom. And we had a, uh, got a rack from Home Depot, like a storage rack. And I, I, I hung these cages in and underneath we would have a, a newspaper and so I had like, I think it was like 60 pair, uh, 60, 60 to 90 birds in there in various cages and just in a, in a spare bedroom. So you could definitely raise quail in a uh, uh, an apartment or uh, a small house. So get started farming. You don't have to buy a lot of acreage. You know, you could just have a, a spot in your shed or something. And these guys don't, um, I mean, you, you can barely hear them now. Every once in a while they'll whistle or uh, um, the, the males do that crow, but it's not like a rooster crow. It, it sounds more like a, a, like a bird singing. So I know of some people that have had them in, in, how, in their backyards in, in suburbs or, or in their house or in an apartment and nobody knew. It sounded just like pet birds. So it's a really great, uh, it's a really great bird to start off with if you want to get into poultry. So, as a recap, the pros, they mass produce eggs. As a, uh, they also are, uh, you can mass produce quail themselves to, uh, for meat, and they have a, a really efficient feed to. Uh, meat and egg ratio they're very calm and docile on um, next to no space I mean this is a I don't know the dimensions of this cage but there's one two. there's like 14 or 15 quail in here and, in this cage and they really could just stay in this cage year-round and they had no problems so um, they're, they're very happy to be in a close-knit uh, environment so now the cons to them is compared to a bob white, they aren't gonna get as heavy. So if you're butchering quail, you know the, the the carcass is not gonna be as much meat on there, but you can offset that by the just the huge quantity of of birds on your table. Uh, and also the con for them is the hens are gonna die off early. So what I know, what I do, is I uh, I plan on them laying at six to eight weeks old, and then I sell them at six months old as meat birds, or I butcher them myself. And so that four month window is their their egg production and and uh, producing more chicks and more quail, more breeding stock. So. That way I don't have to worry about from the six to a year old mark of them just dying off and having to deal with, you know, dead birds.
So anyways, these are Ferro Quail. If you have any questions, uh, comment below and please subscribe and, li and like the channel. Um, I'm also going to do a video on uh, processing quail, how I do it. I don't uh, use a, uh, I skin them instead of plucking them as it's just a quicker way and so I'll show you how to do that. I'm also going to do some uh, really cool uh, egg ideas for, um, for your quail eggs. So stay tuned.